Hello cave dwellers, welcome into the cave. It's the turn of the Sega Saturn today. It arrived here in the UK in 1995, priced at £399.99. That's not cheap. Can you remember the first time you saw one? Um, I actually can't remember the first time I saw one. I can, I can tell you exactly when I saw one. Um, Paul High Street game, which was just by the railway crossing. Okay. That was the first time I saw a Sega Saturn appear in the window. It was playing Panzer Dragoon. That was the game that was used to show it off. And um, I have to say I was impressed. Mm. However, yes, I went into the shop to have a look at it and have a play on it in the kiosk there. But I was in no way going to put my hand in my pocket and buy one. A, because I was a massive PC gamer. Yep. Uh, <laughs> and B, because everybody knew the PlayStation was coming. That's right. Which was priced at, what, 299 It was a significant margin under. Yeah. So, um, and I think with the bundles and everything, it was just a better deal. But And... Ridge Racer was was the game that I really wanted to see uh, for the PlayStation. So that was what was promised. Yeah. Uh, I was if I, if I was going to buy a console, I was going to hang on and see what the PlayStation was like. But the Sega Saturn got to market first, and it did impress with that rolling demo of Panzer mm. Dragoon that I saw. And of course, we knew what would come next: Daytona, Sega Rally, all those games that we'd been playing just that day because they were current in the, the arcades. arcades. Yeah. Um, so we were looking forward to them. And yeah, I've got some of them here: Daytona USA, Sega Rally. Got to have those. However, there's one reason and one reason only why I want to get this Sega Saturn fixed up. And it's this. It's the Sega Ages Volume 1 pack. Have oh, you ever played this? You're going to go on about <laughs> Outrun again, aren't you? It was already retro when it came out. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> so this has got Afterburner 2, Space Harrier, and the best version of Outrun you'll ever play. You would assume <laughs> that you load up MAME and you play the original ROMs from the mm. arcade, and that's the authentic experience, which, of course, it is. But this is better. You love Outrun, don't you, Neil? I do, but do you know what will never run out? Donuts? No. Our love for PCBWay.com. We'd like to thank PCBWay.com for supporting our episode today. They aren't just about PCBs, but they do do a tremendous job of that. They also offer CNC machining, sheet metal fabrication, 3D printing, and injection molding. If you're creating, then PCBWay.com can help you bring your project to life. Get an instant quote now over at PCBWay.com and we thank them for their support. Level pegging between this and the 3DS version, if you've ever played that with the, no, with the depth. I oh, haven't. That's a good one as well. However, I'm telling you now, the only reason I want this up and running <laughs> is, is so I outrun. can play this game. I've, I've never actually seen that before. I thought um, that Outrun was a Japan exclusive, actually. Um, it may have been on its own, but... Um, right in this multi-pack. Okay. No, this was released in the UK. So that's my goal today, to play the silky smooth version of Outrun. And to make it silky smooth, mm. we want to play it in 60 hertz, don't we? Well, this is PAL console, so yeah. it's 50 hertz. 50 hertz. So talk us through some of the upgrades that you've got planned for today. What I think we're going to do is we're going to put an optical drive emulator or an ODE inside. And the one that we've got here today, because we're on a limited budget, is the uh, Fenrir which is all the way from France. We bought this from the um, the inventors. Sorry, inventor, is that the right word? Creator. Way? Creator. Um, we bought this direct, about 110 euros. It's currently out of stock due to chip shortages. Oh, always the way at the um, end, isn't it? But it seems, looking at the firmware, they've put some things in for future hardware revision, so I don't know if they're sidestepping right. that. Okay. We've also seen signs of the Raspberry Pi Zero being used for certain optical solutions. Not on the Saturn, no. but there's one that's appeared for the GameCube. That's right, yeah. And I've got my fingers crossed that we're going to see more of those. Yeah. Um, whether it's feasible on a Saturn, I don't know. But yeah. um, it's quite nice to see that happening. Anyway, that's a complete aside. So you've got that. I've got something over here. I've got a Ooh. couple of brand new uh, game pads from Retro Fighters, um, compatible with the Mega Drive slash Genesis and the Saturn. So we've got a couple of new joy pads, which is useful because I have absolutely no joy pads to well, go with it this. didn't come of anything, did it? <laughs> so not, not even a video camera. We've, we've got those. Um, we've got a 3D printed mount here. That's to go with the Fenrir. Yep, yep. Link to the uh, model below. Mm -hmm. It's on Thingiverse. Wow. And uh, we have um, this genuine, <laughs> um, genuine clone. I can't get the box open, Neil. Genuine clone of a Sega Saturn um, memory card. So this adds RAM, so one meg or four meg 
Or you can also back up your saves to it, I think. Right, so it's got a switch um, so you can yeah. choose what you want. Um, I was flicking through Edge magazine. It was the 50th anniversary, mm. not 50th anniversary, the 50th edition, October 1997. Okay. Just by coincidence, and I came across this little story about um, RAM for the Saturn. Oh, good. Um, so this is when the full meg, the original full meg uh, memory cartridge came about. And it reads, for Sat better news for Saturn owners, the confirmation that a four megabyte memory cartridge will soon be made available by Sega. Mm -hmm. um, due for autumn release 97 in Japan. It carries information that otherwise would have been crammed into the machine's two megabyte of main memory. So wow. you had two okay. meg of RAM. In the same way that the existing one meg cart, so that had already come out, um, will do. It obviates the need for excessive data retrieval and decompression, a necessary evil of mem memory hungry beat em ups. It identifies <laughs> beat em ups. Beat -em -ups. Um, so what it does go on to say, which is quite interesting, is it says Capcom is the first third-party developer to pledge its support for it. It plans releases such as Street Fighter 3 to use the full meg cartridge. And X-Men versus Street Fighter is the first game to take advantage of the new cartridge. I think we should get over to the workbench. Okay. Get the tools out. Yep. And um, I'll make the tea. <laughs> well, someone's got to clean this console. It won't clean itself. <laughs> This is our unloved Saturn then, filled with dandruff, and not just any old finger gravy on the outer case, but console owner's finger gravy. We quickly established it doesn't read any discs, and no matter what we do, the access light just keeps on blinking away down there. It's like the red blink of drive death. Aside from that though, the system turns on, so all in all, it's the perfect candidate for the type of upgrades that we want to do today. The Fenrir ODE comes with a cable and a mount and the link to it and anything else that we talk about today where well, you can find them in the video description. So let's get our Saturn opened up now and remember this isn't an instructional step-by-step -step video just kind of a flavor of our experience today. Inside we see the drive assembly there and we'll be taking that whole thing out to replace it with an ODE. We'll disconnect the lid detection switch and also the power. And then out that whole thing comes. We also need to remove the power supply to get to the main system board. So we'll have to unscrew that. There's just one screw inside. We pop the cable out and then there's two rear screws to get that out. And with a careful wiggle, which Mark's so good at, we can pop that out. With the optical drive removed, the Saturn has a system board and then a front controller board where those joy pads plug in. And uh, there's this cable between the two to connect them up. So we want to disconnect that cable. That will allow us to remove it all. And we'll also pull out the light pipes. And while we're doing that, we'll give the reset switch a wang before removing it. It's impossible not to. A key part of the installation, in fact. Some more screws now to remove the shielding. And as we're doing that and we look around the back, we can see there's this CR2032 battery. Now that's the battery that's used to hold the date and time and also to make sure saves are retained. It'll be long flat by now and we will need to replace it, but you don't need to unscrew the case to get to that. There's just a flap that opens up the back. You swap out the battery, job done. Anyone can do that. So off all the shielding comes and now we can see the Saturn mainboard and all those lovely custom chips. Famously, none of them capable of handling transparency effects, which was a bit of an oversight, but this was a first gen of the hardware 3D accelerated consoles. So I'm willing to cut them a little bit of slack. Now we can lift out the system board and we're gonna trust Mark with a sharp object now. So anything could happen. There are multiple traces around the board that need to be cut. And then we're gonna patch wires into where we cut those traces and run them to our mod board. With each trace that's cut, the obligatory continuity test follows just to make sure we really have cut that trace and they all seem to be fine. There were a few more to do on the top of the board and then when we flip the board over, there's just the one to do on the underside at JP7. And we've cut through that there now. With all of the traces prepped, we now move on to the little controller board from the front of the system. So we'll pop that out. and we'll decase it. And 
And what we'll do in here is we'll change the standard green LED for a three color LED. And that will help us to identify which region the console is running in with the mod. So we can set it to Europe, to Japan, or to North America, and they'll each have their own color. We also do some more cutting here. We're cutting another trace which comes from the reset button. And what we'll do with that is we'll intercept when you press the reset button so we can hold it down and that's the trigger to change regions. And then the light will change with that. We'll check that that's been cut and it's all good. And that's the board prep, or at least the cutting of the trace is done so that we can pop our mods in now. First up is the da-retro.com mod. This allows us to flick between 60 hertz so us slow Europeans can enjoy the full force of 60 hertz gaming. We'll now patch our cables to all of our cut traces and we'll create this spaghetti of wires. But Mark promises me by the end of it, it'll all be neat and tidy. So that's the main board done and we'll swap out the LED on the controller board now. So we'll desolder the old one. And the new LED doesn't actually just slot into those two holes, the cathode and the anode holes on the board. We need to add some wires to the legs because we're gonna run that all the way back to the mod. And we're also gonna ground it on the PCB where we scratched away the coating. So this gives you a better idea. The LED sits in place here. We've got heat wrapped legs and wires routing all the way back along the rear of the controller ports and we'll solder the ground leg onto the PCB ground plane like so. And we patch another wire in on the reset button to register that press on the mod and now we can wire it all together. Just look at that mess. I hope he knows what he's doing. Each wire is now soldered onto the mod and things hopefully start to make a bit more sense. There's the red and the blue wire that come all the way from the LED's legs. the earth and that's the 5 volt there so we'll pop the control board back in and as if by magic those yellow wires are all tidied up now that's a much neater looking mod the lad came good in the end. Now our next mod is the optical drive emulator. This is far simpler. It sits in this 3D printed mount, which goes in here. And then the ODE just clips onto it. We'll plug the power in. That's the power that would have gone in the original optical drive. That goes straight in there. And the longer cable that came with the Fenrar ODE, that plugs into the board and then it goes all the way up to the zero insertion force socket on the Fenrar here. The cable has to be twisted for it to work. And for neatness, we'll put a little bit of a fold in the cable there. And that's our internal mods done. However, our Saturn, like Mark and I, strives to be beautiful on the outside as well as on the inside. So I gave it a quick clean down. I used a little bit of antibacterial spray, some soapy suds, some back to black to get it really nice and gleaming, and some brushes to get right into the nooks and crannies, especially between the lettering, where um, there's lots of dirt and things get squished in there. Everyone likes to squish boogers into the, uh, the raised lettering on a console, don't they? I mean, console gamers, what can you do with them? And finally, I just quickly downloaded the latest firmware. It's 
still regularly being updated on the website. This is a current product at the time that this video goes out. So we've got the latest firmware, we put it on the SD card, we'll make sure we're all up to date and performing at its best, and then it's time for testing. So in goes another quick upgrade, it's the 4 meg RAM upgrade that just slots into the uh, cartridge slot at the rear of the Saturn. In goes the SD card and you can see the value of that 3D printed mount there. Two new joypads are at the ready. And if I hold down the reset button, you can see the new LED change color to indicate the different modes. We're looking good. So when you power this thing on, you get the usual Saturn splash screen and then you're presented with a list of CD images on the SD card. I'm just using a text list at the moment, but there is the option to have preview screenshots pop up if you're that way inclined and you're happy to download or make the screenshots and manage all of that. I'm happy just with a text list here. So you choose your game, you press the A button to launch it and away you go. You're ready for a good session of Saturn gaming. My feelings on the Saturn in the modern day are very similar to those of the PlayStation in that early console 3D gaming era with its low resolution textures and its limited power. The 3D games don't age very well, but as 2D consoles, these are absolute monsters. And that is really well reflected in some of the games that we played today. Radiant Silvergun was a fantastic bullet hell shooter that managed to feel both chaotic and fair in its difficulty. And it looks fantastic. We also noticed that loading times felt really good and there are some firmware update notes over the years that indicate updates and improvements to speed have come and at no point were we waiting or talking about painful load times. Sega Rally of course had to be tried and yes I'd have been very happy with this back home in the day and it's a fair representation of the arcade albeit with plenty of visible pop-up. And the king of pop-up of course was Daytona. A fun game, but the draw distance, even in this later and slightly improved version of the game that we're playing here, is pretty painful. Like I said before, these were just the growing pains of early 3D based consoles. We were well and truly wowed at the time. For the PlayStation fans, here's some Wipeout 2097. I have to say I didn't play it very well, and I feel like it was probably a bit smoother on the PlayStation. So we quickly progressed back to the 2D games and in all honesty we had so much fun with them. Earthworm Jim was great, yes I know it was also on 16-bit consoles but it just felt fantastic on the Saturn. And then I let Mark choose a game and the title of this game translates to Super Big Brother, the ultimate most powerful man in the Milky Way. Um, it involves a bodybuilder in speedos flying through a city shooting tiny bodybuilders and it involves this guy and this other guy coming out of him. This is why Mark doesn't get to choose games. Anyway, after bleaching our eyeballs, I got to outrun the game I really wanted to play on this system, and I wasn't disappointed on this beautiful screen. It was perfect with this setup, as were the other games on the Sega Ages pack. And I later went on to discover uh, Power Drift on another Sega Ages pack, and it was just a perfect arcade conversion. 2D games are wonderful on the Sega Saturn, and to enjoy them at 60 hertz, and of course on this lovely Sony screen we've got here, it's just brilliant. The Saturn of course had a far more successful lifetime in Japan than it did here in Europe, so there were a lot of games to explore that I've probably never heard of, such as Super Big Brother, the ultimate most powerful man in the Milky Way, but I won't be asking Mark for any recommendations. I think I'll find them out for myself, thank you very much. I'm pretty pleased with that, Mark. I'm quite pleased with that as well. Yeah, yeah. the Sega Outrun console is firing on all cylinders. <laughs> If you could build an arcade cab around it, it'd just stick out run on the That's it, yeah, that's, that's all that's I need. All, that's all you wanted. Although truth be told, uh, it's true what people say about the Sega Saturn. It is a 2D mm. powerhouse. Yeah, and we experienced that just in the three hours that we've spent playing on it this afternoon. Yeah. Um, X-Men versus Street Fighter, yep, X-Men Children good. of the Atom, Castlevania. I mean, yeah. there are 3D elements thrown in, but primarily Ooh, yeah. it's a 2D game. Pseudo 3D though, isn't it? Yeah, so. what else did we play? Oof, we, we had to go of all sorts of things. Um, Outrun, of course. Uh, Sonic R, if we go into the 3D game, Sonic yeah. R, Daytona, mm. Sega Rally. And we, we were, um, me, but... I, I think the only disappointed, uh, mm. disappointing moment of the afternoon was 
These controllers are absolutely brilliant. They support the Sega Saturn and the uh, Mega Drive Genesis and... Master System as well. Uh, ma well, yeah, Master System as well. Yeah. On the Mega Drive, you can hold down the two buttons to put it into six button mode. Mm. So you've got a six button Mega Drive pad. Brilliant. The only thing is I looked at these and I just assumed that this analog stick would be analog. Now, apparently if you get the USB version for the PC, yes, you can turn it yeah. into analog mode. But all that does is um, digital uh, eight way directional. Yeah, it's just on or off. Switches. Which is a shame because there were analog pads for the Sega Saturn. There was the 3D control pad. There was mm. the was that the one that came with Nights into Dreams? I think so. Yeah, the big round dinner plate job. There were steering um, wheels. There, there, there were analog sticks, so it would have been really nice to uh, experience that. But and I don't understand why it isn't an analog stick. Perhaps knows. there's some proprietary Sega technology in there. That you... Look, there's every possibility that it is, and we just haven't found out how to turn it on. But there, <laughs> there is no indication in the instructions yeah. on the website. Never underestimate our stupidity. Exactly. So if, <laughs> if you happen to know, uh, let us know. But um, on the PC version, you hold mode and start, yeah. and it enables it, but it, it does nothing on that. Right. So, um, you know, that was my own assumption based on just looking at it and going, it must be analog. Mm -hmm. Other than that, this is a really nice little machine. Yep. Uh, it's a really lovely way to explore the Sega Saturn. Uh, and we haven't even gone into some of the features that are included on the, is it on the Fenrar? Yeah. It's got Wi-Fi capability. Yeah, it's got some kind of uh, web interface. I'll be honest, I haven't even looked at it yet. I think it's yeah. quite young in the development cycle. I think it gives you the ability to remotely launch a game, but yes. the game will be on the SD card and then further down the line, mm. they're talking about the ability to launch them from a NAS or a web server or something like that. So it feels a bit extra to me, to be honest. A little bit extra, as the kids say. Yeah. But um, yeah, and then the only other question is, where in the cave do we put the Sega Saturn for people to enjoy it? And I was I know. scratching my head. I know. Well, we figured it out now, haven't yeah. we? It's we're going to go next. To PlayStation. We're going to put it next to the PlayStation. Currently, there's a, a telly dedicated to the PS1 and the PS2, and nobody really touches the PS2. I, I don't. I consider it retro, but I don't think it's nostalgic enough for people yeah. yet. So, um, it, it's probably nice to put the Saturn next to it and go head-to-head -head fifth gen comparison. It's not retro. <laughs> Uh, so that's what we're going to do. We'll, we'll put the Sega there. There's a SCART switching box so you can switch between yep. the two and people can uh, enjoy it firsthand. So that's where we'll put it. Um, are there any other upgrades that you would like to add to this or do you think we're fully pimped out on the Saturn? Oof. Yeah, I think we are. I mean, there are other ODEs available other than the, the Fenrir. Um, there's the one that goes in the back port and um, you keep your CD drive intact. I mean, the CD drive on this one wasn't working anyway. Yeah. Um, I think we tracked it down to a dodgy cable in the end, so we right. have kept that, and we can the test it. It might there. be a, a nice little spare. It, um, is, it is always nice to keep the CD drive working, mm. but you've got to ask yourself, how many times you're actually going to use that if you've yeah. got your SD card solution in there? Uh, I was very impressed with the loading times on this. Yeah, it was really good. Um, I mean, the other advantage for us here in the cave is when visitors come on the open days, they can use this without having to go and get the discs and we don't have to worry about handling and all yeah. the oils on hands and booklets and they know, can steal the sd card so they don't have to do it themselves bit rot. <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> have to put a bit of tape over it or something so i mean other upgrades really the only thing it needs is uh, a new battery right um, and you don't have to open it up to do that you just take the back cover off yeah it's just put the a new battery in cr 2032 pop that in but there is another um, mod you can do to this where you take out the volatile RAM that holds the saves and you replace it with um, some non-volatile RAM, I think FRAM. FRAM, um, okay. So that might be something worth doing. But then again, I mean, batteries are cheap, they're plentiful. Um, and in our situation, really, you know, we've bothered about keeping... Visitors saves. who come for a quick blast on the Sega Saturn yeah. are not going to be worried about save games. It's just nice to stop the pop-ups coming up saying, you know, it's forgotten the date and time. And yeah, so, like the that. so we'll put the that. battery in for that. Yeah. Um, with the Fenrir as well, um, you can actually back up your save games to a file on the SD card. Oh, okay. So that no compatibility problems with that. It's just seamless. I don't. I, don't know. I imagine it's just like take it off, pop it back on, and well, I'll, I'll report back. I'll give it a go. <laughs> to be honest, I'm I'm so rubbish at games now that I've never <laughs> yeah. I've never had you a save game. To a save <laughs> I've, never, I've never had a save game worth saving. You know, um, but I don't know. It might be it might be useful if you. I don't know. And um, the Saturn we've got here, yeah, it's got a few battle scars. It's got a great big scrape up the side. It's a bit beaten up, but History. it's fine. I think. Well, it wasn't working when it got here. It was yeah. grotty. True, true enough. Had an unmentionable blodge on the top. I don't <laughs> it know did. what that was. We've wiped that off without cat, cat saying owners, anymore. Cat owners. Yeah. Um, 
Thank you again, Mark, for all your help. No, Always a pleasure. My pleasure. Uh, another system added to the cave for people to enjoy. Nice to be let out of the cupboard. <laughs> <laughs> and if you'd like to come and enjoy this yourself, head over to the website, rmcretro.com forward slash visit, where you can book a ticket mm. to come and visit. We've got guests, special guest speakers coming to the cave who you can come mm. and see. We can just come out, hang out and play games with yeah. me. Um, so we'll look forward to seeing you soon. As always, thank you for taking the time to watch. Thank you, Mark. Thank Take you care. Everybody out there. See, see you, you next soon. time. Bye-bye. Bye. over you at the end there. That's all right. I felt I thought you were giving me a gap and then we both spoke at the same time. That's all right. It's more chatty though, isn't it? This Natural. is the level of professionalism people expect. Professionalism. Yeah.